Today we're talking about the tools inside of Avid. Woo! Hello peeps, what's up? My name is Steve Douglas, as you can see right here. And today I'm gonna to be talking about the tools that you can use inside of Avid. And I'm also gonna briefly go over importing footage one more time, just in case you guys missed it in one of my previous episodes, or for some reason I completely forgot to include it in one of my episodes, because that may be something that happened. If so, I apologize, but I'm gonna go over that stuff really quick. So using the same project that I set up in one of my previous videos, I'm gonna open up the raw footage bin. Now for the purposes of this video, I'm actually only going to link footage. I will go over transcoding high quality footage for smaller systems in another video, for this, I'm just gonna focus on pulling the stuff in. So you're gonna right click, go to input, you're gonna go to source browser. Now some people will use import media, but that's something different. You'll wanna use your source browser to navigate to your footage. So for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna to go to my two terabyte hard drive and I'm just gonna use some stuff from another project that I've worked on. So once you click on that, you may get some of these errors. Um, if you cannot import certain things, check to see what file it's trying to import. In this case, it's trying to import a PKF. I'm gonna click no because I don't actually need that. None of the PKFs do I need uh, because those are just alternative files for stuff that I really don't need. I just want the MOV files. Once you've done that, you should see that either in the bin that you selected or in a brand new bin, your footage will be imported. Because mine got imported in this manner, I'm actually going to shift click, select all of my footage, pull it into my raw footage bin, and get rid of this bin. I like to keep things organized the way that I prefer. Sometimes Avid will create things that it doesn't want and you can just go in and remove those as needed. You can go ahead and close the source bin. Now, one thing that I'm gonna wanna check is that there is some audio in here that is not supposed to be in here. So for the purposes of this project, just to keep you guys grounded, I'm gonna open up sound, I'm gonna open up raw audio, and I'm gonna take all the audio files that accidentally got imported via that source browser and stick them in there. That way I have the audio if I need it. And you guys can tell by the little symbol over here, this film strip with the link means it's linked footage. This audio waveform with the link means it's linked audio. Now for the most part, you can just link audio because audio is not a highly, you know, it doesn't drain your CPU, but you know, what's the point in taking up more space if you don't need to? Then once you've done that, you can go ahead and you can close that raw audio bin. Make sure your sequence has been is open and we're gonna right click and we're gonna create a new sequence. And we can just call this uh, Rough Cut 1. For the most part, or Rough Cut 01, I apologize. For the most part, you'll wanna follow a pretty standard naming convention and that's gonna go Rough Cut, Fine Cut, Final Cut. And then things may start to change because you may have a picture lock cut, a color cut, you may have a sound cut, different things that will differ, but you generally have a rough, fine, and final cut. Those are your main three stages of an edit. In order to keep the naming convention fairly simple, you'll want to start off with Rough Cut 01, and then every time thereafter that you start a brand new editing session, it's a good idea to click on that sequence and then hit Control D or Command D, depending on what system you're on. I'm actually going to delete that because I haven't modified anything, but that way you constantly have something that you're updating and you'll change it to Rough Cut 02. That way you can always go back to the session that you started in, in case you just got way too into your work and suddenly you're like, wow, this is completely devolved into something I don't want. You can always go back. That's why you do that. Sequ Sequences don't take up a whole lot of space. Pro edits will have hundreds of those guys sitting in various bins. When in doubt, duplicate your sequence. Another note is that unlike Premiere, Avid will only keep one sequence open at a time. So it doesn't actually drain your CPU to have too many of those sequences open at one time because it's only gonna default to having one. Don't worry about that too much. So because I'm on a one monitor setup, I'm gonna reconfigure this window layout a little bit for you guys. The audio tool, this is something that'll allow you to monitor your levels. This is something that you can get to by going to tools audio tool and that'll cause it to pop up if it's not already. I'm actually gonna close it because I'm not doing anything with audio just yet. We can see that we have all of our clips. Now you can organize this in a variety of different ways. You can click on name. If you double click, it'll organize them from you know highest to lowest. As you can see, 5647, 5646, it's going down. Double click the name, it'll go from lowest to highest you know, yada, yada, yada. You can also organize it by the date it was created. That's what I generally like to do because then it actually imports my footage in the order it was shot. In case you're importing from multiple sources, although you should be using different bins for that. You can look at things in different views. So you can have list view, which is gonna let you look at all of your clips as data. And when you double click them, they'll appear in your source window. Or you can come down here, you can click this. This is note view. So you can kind of see a small thumbnail of the image and you can also take notes. So you can say like bad take over steps or something. You can, you can take whatever notes you would like to take. You guys can can also come down here and you can select thumbnail view. Now this is something that people that are migrating from Premiere will know very, very well. It's something that is very common in Premiere. It's actually the standard view for most clips. And you can see this is kind of small. So what you can do is you can hold control or command and you can use your K and L key. So command K will make the clip smaller. Command L will make them larger. And then you can, you know, scrub up or down using, you know, the scroll bars 
and you can, you know, resize and refit as needed. And you can make these clips fairly large so that you can see them, you know, up at a, you know, face value glance. I actually prefer the note view. It's probably my favorite because I can see my notes and I can also see a thumbnail that's big enough for me to tell what the shot was. Once you have that and you have everything organized the way that you would like to see your clips, make sure to leave your sequences been open. If you close this, it will actually close whatever sequence you currently have open. If your sequence happens to be in a different bin, whatever bin your sequence is in that you're currently working with, do not close that bin, leave it open. It's another reason we like to keep a sequences bin, just so we can keep those things open there and we don't accidentally close it because you pretty much never close that bin. And as always, make sure to hit Command S every once in a while to save your project. It's just a good force of habit. You'll be glad you did because one day your project will crash after an hour of work and you'll really have hoped that you had that urge to hit Command S every 10 minutes or so. That way you don't lose too much work. It, it saves your life. Also, back up your projects, please. Have you guys ever wanted to make a site, but it was a little too hard for you? Well, if you guys check out the link below, you can get 10% off of your first subscription to Weebly. Weebly makes it incredibly easy to make custom websites that look professional, clean, and function. They're one of the best sites out there that I've ever seen. It's the site that I use to host most of my material. It's just an awesome website. They have awesome customer service, awesome prices, and you can get your first domain free with a one-year subscription. So check out Weebly. Save 10% down below. It'll help me out a ton. This is not a sponsored video. I just love giving them a shout out. So thank you guys so much. On to the next part. Okay guys, so now that we've done that, I'm just gonna do a similar to what I did in Tuesday's video. I'm just gonna put a bunch of obscure edits in here. So I'm gonna pull just some clips of Malik doing a couple different things. So here's one of him running up to make a jump. So, you know, he didn't quite land it, but we're gonna throw it in just for just for cutting sake. And then we'll we'll take a couple more different shots. Now, one important thing to remember is that whenever you're loading clips into your source window, make sure to use your I and O keys to set your in and out points, and that'll determine where your clip begins and where it ends whenever you place it into your timeline. And you can place things into your timeline by either clicking and dragging, like so, or what I prefer to do is use your V and B key. Now V is gonna splice in your clip. What that'll do is wherever your cursor currently is within the timeline, your scrub tool, it will place that clip at exactly that point and whatever is over here and whatever is over here, it will push that apart to make room for it. It won't get rid of anything. Problem with that is it can sometimes throw things out of sync, especially if you're only importing video or only importing audio as it will only shift whatever tracks that it's currently affecting. The B key is going to overwrite. What that'll do is it'll throw a clip down into the timeline, but it's gonna erase whatever was there replace it with its own content. The fortunate thing to, for this is that it's not going to override the sync. However, it will override your footage and potentially lose something that it might not be so easy to undo or dig back up so that maybe if you needed that shot, now you're gonna have to go find it again to place it back. So be cautious with both. Get very used to using your keyboard because the faster you are, the more efficient you are, the more you can spend time thinking about the creative decisions. So I'm just gonna find a couple more clips to throw in here. A couple more stunts by my good friend Malik here. Now, as I was showing you guys before, I'm gonna hit V, and as you notice, it kind of put its, it put this clip in between this and this clip. So it didn't actually delete anything, it just shifted everything. Now, let me show you what happens if I were to turn off all of the audio tracks, which you guys can control your audio and video track functions over here. If I press V now, suddenly, this is the audio from 5636. 5636 is over here. It only placed in the video and only spliced that in. That is why it's dangerous sometimes, as long as, you know, you just gotta be careful. Pay attention to what you're doing and things should go just fine. So now that we have three clips in here, nothing really matches, nothing's meant to cut here. I'm just tr here to try and explain the tools and explain a little bit of the functionality. We're kind of cutting up too sleep. So once you're into the timeline, let me break down a couple tools for you guys. This is your scrub tool and your cursor. This identifies where this frame currently is placed. So wherever this is on the timeline is the image that you'll see here. What you guys are probably seeing is you're missing these options here. Go to this little triangle, you can click that. It'll sh reveal different things. And if you come down here, you can select your waveforms. That way you can see your audio. That's super useful if you're cutting to music, if you're trying to cut dialogue, if you're trying to really edge things out and you're more of a visual person. I know I definitely am. One thing to keep in mind though is that whenever these are present, it does fill up your RAM because it takes space to draw out these waveforms. It also takes up a little bit of CPU power. So you're gonna want something that has a little bit of oomph. Sometimes you may not need these on if you're cutting audio only and you're cutting to a song. Maybe you don't need to see the audio waveforms because you can hear it very clearly. Just depends on what's going on, but that's how you get to it. Over here on your left, and now these are some of the most common items. This little guy right here, you're gonna wanna almost always turn him off. What that does is it's similar to Premiere and it will keep the video linked to its respective audio. Most pro editors don't use that. Very few times will I use it. Sometimes I will keep it if I'm cutting like a, like a video like this, a YouTube video, just because it's simpler and it makes that move a little quicker. But 99% of the time you're going to want it off. But now you can see I can select each individual item on its own and it's not linking anything. If you come over here, you have your segment mode, which is a lift and overwrite. So if I start moving things,
settings while this tool is active, it will overwrite other footage rather than splice it in or move things. On a similar note, if you click this yellow tool here and deselect the red, it is moving things. But instead what it's doing is when I move this clip, it's taking the section 5626 that was here and placing it before. So it doesn't get rid of anything, but it is displacing things and maintaining time. Whereas overwrite doesn't maintain time, it just maintains clip integrity. Similar to that, you have your overwrite trim and your ripple trim. Your overwrite trim is going to do exactly what it says. It's going to overwrite whatever's to the left or right of it whenever you use it. You, you get to that by going down here, you'll see a little red trimmer there. It'll appear on either side of the clip. I'll go over what this little white symbol means in here in a minute. Ripple edit, if you deselect the red, this, is gonna push things. As you can see, this clip, these both of these clips are maintaining their size and I've now thrown them out of sync for that reason. But that's really useful for whenever you wanna shift an entire scene. Or maybe you have like one clip and you we wanna maintain sync. So you select the top clip it's, and its respective audio and you can push everything a little bit longer without disturbing too many items. It's really useful. Generally, the way that people will work is they will have red on almost all the time, and when they need, they will turn on yellow. That's generally the way that I work. I keep red on almost all the time because I don't have to worry about things falling in and out of sync. From time to time, I may need those yellow tools. Now, as you guys saw before, I have this little white tool here that appears whenever I'm on the middle of two different clips. What that'll allow me to do is if I have residual footage from either clip, either after it's ended or before it's begun, I can use this trim tool to maintain time, but kind of stretch the clip before or after without changing the audio beneath it or without changing the length of the clips. You know, my video begins at zero, zero and extends down here to seven seconds, 13 frames. This doesn't change the amount of time that happens between the left and the right, but it does change where the clip cuts. You'll notice it doesn't change the audio either. You can select multiple things at one time, and so now the entire item will shift. This is really, really useful for whenever it comes time to cut scenes, cut dialogue, and you decide, oh, like I don't really like that person's facial expression, but I want to cut back, but I want to maintain their audio. So this becomes really, really useful, and it's one of the most useful tools within Avid that a lot of other pro editors don't have. Another tool that I use fairly often is to the right and to the left. What that does is it'll take wherever your cursor currently is placed, and anything to the right, including whatever is currently under it, Will be selected that's great for whenever you're cutting maybe a really long form movie and you want to add a scene or you want to add a little bit onto the end of something without messing up the sync of everything else so you place your cursor at the point that you want to maintain you hit select right and you'll be able to shove everything down and make room for that new scene without affecting the rest of the footage too much another tool that a lot of editors that come from premiere and final cut really look for and they're like where is it it's one of the most essential tools ever why can't i just find it is the blade tool in avid it is called the add edit tool and it's located right here it is not program to any specific key off the bat. In my next video, I'm gonna go over creating custom presets inside of Premiere and Avid so that you guys can start to manipulate things and conform your keyboards to the way that you would like them in case you're coming in from a different application, you're used to the way that iMovie or Final Cut or Premiere or any number of other NLEs are used to working. So that way you can modulate your keyboard and make it the best for you. But I'm gonna give you guys some tips and recommendations on what I'd recommend in order to maintain efficiency. As we dig more and more into Avid, you'll realize there are so many different functions that you may not wanna map a certain key function to a specific key because there may be something that would better fit that later. But I thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you could check out the Spreadshirt sale we've got going on down below. I just added a few more designs and a few more products to the store. You guys can buy those and you get a certain percentage off each week. Helps me out a lot. And you guys can get some awesome merchandise. Thank you so much for watching. If you could like and subscribe below. Helps me out a ton. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!